Hello, Bruins. One of the more serious elements of academic research is avoiding plagiarism, which is passing off another person's work as your own. People usually imagine plagiarism as someone copying someone else's entire paper and turning it in, but a lot of plagiarism can happen unintentionally, such as when you're writing a research paper and don't properly cite your sources. For a silly example, after reading an article on koalas, you write in your paper that koalas can sleep for up to 18 hours a day, but you don't state where you got that information. Or you take a sentence from an article you read, but again, you don't indicate you're doing it. Those both count as plagiarism, which in a worst case scenario can result in a zero grade for that assignment and even failing the course. This is serious stuff, so today we'll make sure you know when you should be citing your sources to avoid plagiarizing them. Here's an easy rule. If you're referencing someone else's work, you should cite that information. Even if you feel like most of your sentences are ending with a citation, if you're still referencing a source, you need to show that through the use of a citation. Some people hear this and get worried because all the information we know came from somewhere, right? So do we need to go out of our way to find a source before we can state something like nurses work in the healthcare field or George Washington was the first president of the United States? This is where a concept called common knowledge comes into play. If it's something that you can reasonably assume that both you and your audience already knew before starting this class or whatever context you're working in, you don't need to find a source to prove that information. Common knowledge does vary depending on context. A group of second-year nursing students will have a different pool of common knowledge than a first-year business student. Or someone who doesn't live in the United States might not know that George Washington was our first president, and they would have to cite the source where they learned that information because of that different context. This can be somewhat of a confusing gray area. I usually tell students that if they have a source on hand, for example, a definition of a term in their textbook, when the term is new to them, they should go ahead and cite it. But if they're worried about finding a source to prove something that's pretty basic knowledge, common knowledge has you covered there. Using citation to attribute work to the original author, it's completely fine to even use exact wording, images, or graphs created by another person. We just need to show we're doing that. For tables and images, we would attribute it with a standard citation, and for a direct quote, we just need to take the additional step of surrounding that borrowed text with quotation marks and putting a citation afterward. So you should hopefully feel a little more comfortable knowing when to cite your sources. How to cite them is a different matter, and we will have lessons on APA, MLA, and Chicago to help you navigate your instructor's chosen citation style. In the meantime, if you have any questions about citing sources or anything else related to library research, please contact your Morris librarians. We are always happy to help you.